Hey guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com. I've been here doing some test shoots with Lauren now for about the last hour. I've been trying to come up with something interesting that I could teach you guys today. And a lot of the pictures that I was trying to come up with were either total failures or they started to look like other pictures I had taken. And Patrick had a really good idea. He said, why don't you just use a single light so today I'm going to use just a single light, but instead of lighting from a standard angle, I'm going to be lighting from the opposite side. And this is a technique that a lot of the masters have used over the years. It's something that I have never been fully comfortable with, but let's go ahead and give it a try today. Today, the single light that we're going to be using is a Profoto B1. I've got a beauty dish on here, and at the moment I've got a grid inside. Let me pull the grid off just so this will be a little bit easier for you guys to see on video. Um, let me take you through a few of the standard ways that I would use a beauty dish if I was going to take a standard portrait. So first let's start over here where I would normally be. This is the right side of the camera and I'm gonna get Lauren to look a little bit towards this direction. We're gonna start really far over here. Go ahead and kind of look this way for me. And what I'm, I'm looking at is the opposite side of her face. I really want to play with that shadow that the nose is casting and that little triangle of light that we can make using the dish. Go ahead and take a test shot here. So you can see we've got tons of shadow on her face. I don't think the little triangle that we're trying to create is big enough. So what I'm going to do is just bring the light around a little bit further. Same picture. Great. So obviously I would say our shadows are very harsh right now. There's a few different things we can do to play with that. We could point the dish more at her like this. It's going to create a softer light. Instead of using the edge of the beauty dish, I'm kind of using the center of the beauty dish now. She's actually in the uh, shadow of this center plate here. That's going to create a much softer light. And something else I might do is to create like a flat type of shot. Move this light right over top of the camera. So if you look at her face right now, I've got, I've got the light just barely above the lens here. Let's take a test shot. You can see very flat looking, looks almost like uh, some sort of direct flash. So what we can do is we can raise this light and what I'm looking for is the shadow being cast by her nose and the bottom of her chin. So now you can see we've got some darker shadows being cast by both her nose and the chin. This is the standard type of lighting that I like to play with and obviously this is just the beginning stages and we can really work with different fill lights and accent lights and stuff like that. But what I never tend to do and what I always love when I look at the masters of photography and I, and I check out their work is they, in many cases, light from the opposite side of the nose. So if Lauren looks this way to camera right, but then we light from camera left, we can get some really interesting looking shots. So let's go ahead and move over there. Now, if you've never used a beauty dish before, I want to point out what's going on with this, with this plate in the middle here. The light is hitting the back of the plate and then it's reflecting in the sides of the dish and then it's coming out the sides of the dish. If you look at the entire psych wall in the back here, you can see the shadow that this dish is casting. So we have two options here. We can put her in that shadow and there's going to be relatively soft light or we can use the edge of the dish and we can create a really hard light on our subject. So watch her face as I move this light. You can see how much brighter it gets on the edge because no longer is she in the shadow of this center plate here. And if you can see the background here, as I move this around, I'm getting spill all over the place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the grid now. And what that's going to do is point the light in a very specific direction. We're not gonna be worrying about uh, spill at all anymore. And because the grid's gonna eat a lot of light, I've turned up the strobe three stops. So we're getting nice, almost flat looking light on her right cheek, camera left. But then that cheek in the background, we are getting just a little hint of light on that back cheek, which I really do like. And what we're also getting is we're getting a nice gradient on the background as well. If we wanna get rid of that gradient, what we probably wanna do is get this light even closer to her. So let's see if that works. So I'm gonna get this as close as I can 
to Lauren without actually getting it into my frame here. Now, as we get the light closer, we're gonna start dealing with the inverse square law and we're gonna see a lot of light fall off from the front of her cheek to the back. For this shot, I don't think it really calls for this type of lighting. I want it to look a little bit flatter and a little bit punchier. So what I'm going to do is pull this light back where we had it before. I think that's where I wanna work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna play with the height of this light a little bit. I feel like um, it may be a little bit low and I'd like to see her chin casting just a little bit more shadow. So I think we've got the light in the perfect spot for this vibe. So I'm just going to work on the posing now and let's see if we can get that one perfect shot. So we've gotten a range of different emotions, expressions, poses with this lighting. I think we've got some great shots. Before we call it, what I'm going to do is just add one more light to the background just so we can have another option with a pure white background. So now we've got shots with a dark gray background and a pure white background. Let's head over to the computer, find our favorite shot, and let's get to post-processing. All right, guys, we're here on the computer. I wanna quickly show you some new software that I was just introduced to. I have been using the exposure software by Alien Skin for probably the last 10 years or so. And what I've been using it for is to give my images a look after I'm done editing them in Photoshop or Lightroom. Alien Skin uh, Exposure, their software, is incredible for mimicking film and giving each of your shots a very unique look. If you've seen our tutorial that we did with Joey Wright, he's an incredible swimwear photographer. Every single image that he releases goes through Alien Skin before he publishes it online. Now, the cool thing about this software is that I always thought it was a plugin for Photoshop or Lightroom but now it is standalone software. It's still a plugin, you can still use it like a plugin, or you can use it without Lightroom or without Photoshop. So if you're a wedding photographer and you just use Lightroom exclusively and you don't really need Photoshop and you're tired of paying those monthly fees to Adobe for the Creative Cloud, this might be a really exciting change for you. Let me show you how this works really quick. I'm going to right click on one of these raw files here and just click open with, and you can see Alien Skin Exposure X3 here. And what it's going to do here is open up not just the image that I clicked on, but all of the images in the folder. It's gonna work very similarly to Lightroom. So one huge difference with this software over Lightroom that I really appreciate is that if we edit a single image here, what it's going to do is within the folder where this raw file lives, there's going to be a folder instantly created called Alien Skin. And within this folder, there is a sidecar file. And what this software is going to do is create the sidecar file for every image that you edit. And this is where it's going to save all of those settings. Adobe Lightroom creates a catalog file, but that has to live on your local hard drive. You can't leave it on a server and you can't share it amongst multiple users or computers. So that is a huge pain for us. This is going to be a massive difference in the way that we work. Now, probably the biggest complaint with Adobe Lightroom is that it's not very fast for calling. I have not done extensive tests with this, but it does seem to be faster for me when I'm actually calling these images. And I can show you how this works here. If you just double click on an image, what it's going to do is create little thumbnails along the bottom here and using the right and left keys, just like Adobe Lightroom, we can go from picture to picture. I mean, the way this is loading here is really instantaneous and, um, you know, I don't know that it's faster than Photo Mechanic, but it's certainly comparable in this small little test here. And I will say, we are accessing all of these files off of our server. So it's going to be significantly slower for us here than it would be if it were on a local SSD drive for you. So let me quickly show you how the software works. I'm not gonna take you through an entire thing here, but basically I could go through, I could rate the images by pressing number keys here. I could star them, I could color them. It's almost the exact same as Lightroom. So if you're familiar with that software, you will instantly know how to work this. So if we look over in the right panel over here, you'll notice that this looks very similar to Adobe Lightroom. We can change all of our uh, standard settings, the contrast, exposure, highlight shadows, whites, blacks, you get the idea. There's a ton of other drop-down menus where you can edit almost anything you could possibly imagine. Now for a shot like this, I'm going to want to go into Photoshop to get really detailed with the retouching. But if you're a wedding photographer and you just need to do a little bit of retouching and you don't have time to go into Photoshop for a thousand different images, this software does have blemish removal as well. You can see up here, I've got the little Band-Aid tool. And if I hit Control and Plus, I can zoom in here. 
I'll zoom in one more time. And you can see I can easily click on a little blemish and you can see the software automatically grabs where it believes is clean skin and I can just move this around if I want it to be somewhere else. Super, super simple. Again, this would not work for fashion photography where you have to be absolutely flawless with the skin, but for weddings, this works great. It also has other features like gradients and stuff. So if you're shooting landscapes and you want to darken up the sky but keep the foreground a different exposure, you're going to be able to do that in this software as well. So now let's talk about what this software is really all about, what's really most exciting, and it's these film presets over here. On the left side, we have hundreds of different film presets. And this is why I have used Alien Skin software for so long. You can see here that we have these little thumbnails so we can see what this is going to look like before we even apply it. But we don't even have to click on it to apply it. We just mouse over and it instantly changes full screen to what each one of these presets looks like. And these are the best presets I have ever seen when it comes to giving an image a look. There's just so many options. And then once you choose one of these options, there are unlimited ways to customize it after that point black and white split toning here. We can give it some interesting color. Let's see if we want to go to cinema. So many other programs that I've seen that have done similar stuff to this. Everything looks just so cheesy to me. I'm telling you that like 90% of these presets look amazing and are actually usable. And then of course there are unlimited things that you can do to these shots afterwards to customize them even further so nobody's going to be able to look at your shot and go, ah, you'd put an alien skin on that. Now before I add one of these presets, I do want to make sure that her skin is a little bit more retouched than it is right now. So let me go ahead and bring this into Photoshop. All right guys, we're here in Photoshop. Let me show you quickly what I've done. You can see as I add these layers for the first one, I just brightened her eye up a little bit. I thought it was a little underexposed. I then did a little bit of blemish removal, dodging and burning. I then did a little bit more skin retouching on a flat layer that was above it, just to smooth out this part of her cheek right here. I then fixed the flyaways in her hair, and then I fixed the wrinkles that were on the sleeve of her shirt. So at this point, I feel like we're ready to give this image a final look. And so I could save this and open it in the standalone software that I just showed you, or I could just use the plugin. And it's going to work the exact same way. I'm going to go up here to filter, and you'll notice the alien skin is down here, exposure X3. And this looks the exact same as the software that we were just using. I love that. So no matter how you use it, it's going to work the exact same. Um, even though we are still in Photoshop, we can still change all of the different settings over here. And if I hit apply, what it's going to do is just create another um, layer up here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and we will open the program back up. So now it's just all about finding the right look for this shot. And I'm not sure that I have really anything in mind, but we can just go through here and mouse over each one of these different options. And you can see, I mean, just the black and white. We have so many options here. I'm going to click down and go to color film aged. Let's see what we have in here. Let's go ahead and pick the color photo warm skin and uh, tone this down a little bit and hit apply. So what it's going to do here is create that layer right on top. And I got to say, I mean, this looks awesome as it is. I'm just going to show you one other thing that you could do. I might say that her eye is just a little bit dark. And there's a few different ways that we could go about brightening it, but I'm going to show you how I do it just by creating a new layer with the Alien Skin software. I'm going to turn this layer off, uh, click on this one, and I'm going to go back to filter Alien Skin Exposure X3. It's going to open up with the exact same thing applied. And what I'm going to do is just change the exposure here. And all I'm looking at is her eye. So I'm not worried about what the rest of the image looks like. I think that looks pretty decent. I'm going to click apply. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this one on top. So you can see that I've got the brighter one on top and the darker one down below. I'm going to hold alt and click the mask button down here. 
It's going to create a mask here that's black, so it's going to hide everything in that layer. I'm going to get the paintbrush. I'm going to paint white. And let's set this to around 14% opacity is fine. And I'm just going to start painting on her eye just a little bit to brighten it up here. I just want to add a little bit more interest to her eye. And then we can toggle this on and off and kind of see how far we've gone. Maybe I've gone a little bit too far. So what I can do, switch back over to black. And I'm just going to paint under her eye. Because I feel like her, the eye itself looks good. But maybe around her eye should be a little bit darker. And I can toggle that on and off. I think that looks much better. And maybe you would say, well, maybe her face is a little bit bright compared to her neck and maybe parts of her hair. We can do the exact same thing by painting in some of these highlights on her neck here. So maybe we want to brighten this up just a little bit down here. Brighten up this collarbone. Maybe this hair down here. Just brighten it up just a little bit. And let's toggle it on and off. Awesome. I think we've got a finished shot. So guys, that's just a very quick look at Alien Skin's new exposure software. This is not sponsored content, but they did give us the new version of the software, and I'm really impressed with it. Like I said, I've been using exposure for probably 10 years now. It's my go-to software when it comes to giving my images a look, but now I actually might start using it instead of Lightroom because in many ways it is significantly better than Lightroom. If you'd like to give it a try, head over to alienskin.com. You can get a 30-day free trial. And they did tell me to tell you that if you do buy it, type in F Stoppers at checkout and you will get some sort of discount. So that's it, guys. As you can see, I've been a huge fan of Alien Skin for a long time, but this is the absolute first time that I've ever used their standalone software. It's awesome software, especially if you're trying to give your photos a specific look. And I think it worked really well with the shot that we did today. When it comes to the lighting on today's shot, this is a style of lighting that I almost never do. I may have never done it before. I've seen other photographs where I love the outcome, but for some reason it's always felt more comfortable for me to light from the direction of somebody's nose. I guess that's just how I was taught. So if there's a certain style or direction of lighting that you've never tried before, definitely give it a try. It will make you a much better photographer, even if it makes you a little uncomfortable at the beginning. For more free content like this, head over to fstoppers.com. Every single day we have content that's free. And if you'd like to check out our full photography tutorials, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.